Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bruno Fierens. I'm working for TMS Software and I would like to thank Embarcadero for organizing this webinar about the TMS Cloud Pack components. In this webinar, I would like to introduce you to the components in the TMS Cloud Packs, give you an overview of the architecture of the components and the many cloud services already covered by these components. And we will have a look at three specific demos. One demo about accessing cloud storage services, one to interact with cloud personal information management services, and we'll round up with a demo uh, using the Microsoft Artificial Intelligence Cloud Services. The TNS Cloud Pack um, is all about components that wrap popular cloud services for you and makes it that easy to access these cloud services. It's available for Delphi and for C++ Builder and both for VCL Windows application development, but also for FireMonkey cross-platform application development supporting Windows, macOS, iOS and Android. And we've even a version that allows you to create applications that access cloud services from Linux and also Raspberry Pi applications. It's a uh, bundle of easy to use classes that uh, allow you to interact with cloud services via class methods and class, cloud, class properties. These classes um, give you an abstraction from the REST APIs and it saves you from reading through the various specifications of each such REST API that is documented by the cloud service itself. And it also saves you from keeping track of changes of these APIs and updating your application with newer versions of APIs as they come available from cloud services. I would like to cover the architecture of the cloud components in a nutshell. Basically, um, there is a class, a base class, that uh, from which all our cloud service components descend. And this base class already performs the majority of the work to do all uh, functionality of accessing REST-based cloud services. This includes app registration handling, each application that accesses a cloud service has a unique application ID and secret, so this is handled by the base class. Also handled is the OAuth 1.0, 1.0a, and the most commonly used now uh, version 2 of OAuth, handled by the base class. As this um, cloud service access components are all uh, using HTTP communication, there is an HTTP implementation for doing all HTTP operations such as get, put, post, delete. And um, these HTTP access functions are implemented using operating system uh, API calls. So for each operating system supported, Windows, iOS, macOS, and Android, we use the specific operating system calls there to perform HTTP access. And there is also token persistence, the uh, access token that needs to be obtained to access a cloud service uh, can also easily be persisted. From this base class, implementing all this um, core functionality, we descend uh, several components, classes, that implement then the specific cloud service functionality. The first part is the application registration. As I explained, for accessing a cloud service, you need to um, apply for an application key and secret from the cloud service itself by registering your application. And uh, you need to uh, set up this application key and secret with the component accessing the cloud service. And this includes um, also um, specifying your scope of access. For example, a service can give you a uh, scope of access to read information from the cloud service, but you can also 
have services that um, where you need a specific scope to perform both read and write of data on this cloud service. Connecting to a cloud service basically comes down to uh, the following sequence of steps. First of all, there is a check if an access token is already available, if it was persisted in some file or database or the Windows registry, for example. And that access token that is the key to being able to access the cloud service needs to be tested first. If the access token is available, uh, then we can proceed to test if the access token is still valid, as for some cloud services um, access token have has the uh, has a limited access um, time that it's available or working so if the access token that we had persistent is uh, still working we can proceed um, to connect and use the cloud service if this is not the case if there is no access token uh, we need to perform a new authentication and authorization. So we need to uh, offer the user um, the possibility to enter his credentials and to authorize the application to um, access the cloud service, to access his account, his data on the cloud service. So at component level, there is a simple connect method. And when the connection is successful, either by an already available access token that was tested or by a new authentication and authorization after this is done or handled the unconnected event of this component is called this is an overview of the cloud services that we currently cover in the tms cloud pack components as you can see there are many services offered by google like uh, the Google Drive, Google Mail, uh, Google Contacts and Google Calendar, which are part of the Google uh, Personal Information Management Services. Also quite some services from the Microsoft Cloud, uh, which includes Microsoft OneDrive and also the Microsoft PIM services, Live Calendar and Live Contacts. And there are many others like uh, YouTube, for example, a lot of social media cloud services, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Foursquare, um, cloud storage services such as Box, Amazon Cloud Drive, High Drive, um, and some, um, let's say, miscellaneous cloud services, services such as sending SMS messages or getting weather information, doing payments with PayPal, etc. So, first of all, we will be having a look at using cloud storage services. This is a series of cloud storage services that we currently support. Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, uh, Hubic, High Drive, and Amazon Cloud Drive. We've introduced, on top of the base class, that is doing the cloud um, access and a class specifically for cloud storage access which is the t cloud storage class and this um, abstract class implements the uh, usual functions that we need to access a cloud storage service being uh, upload download delete a file create a folder search for a file and get the full um, cloud drive information and so uh, for each cloud storage service, we have a class descending from this abstract class D cloud storage. And uh, this implements the specifics for um, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. So in this uh, first demo, I'll be uh, demonstrating how we can access um, both Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive in an abstract way. So we develop the application to access the cloud storage service. And uh, then we can connect to, um, for example, Google uh, Drive. And with uh, virtually no changes in the code, we can convert this application to use um, the Microsoft OneDrive. So let's switch to Delphi now and have a look at this demo. So here we are in Delphi and I have already prepared the basics to win some time 
for the demo application that will access the cloud storage services, in this case, Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. I've dropped the ADB G Drive component, which is part of the DMS Cloud Pack on the form, which is the non-visual component through which we will access the Google Cloud Storage service. And then I have here prepared some code that uh, probably does what you learned first when you um, started up Delphi 1 uh, 22 years ago. Uh, the typical example where you have an edit control, a button control, and a list box control, and adds items to the list box um, that were added or set in the edit control. For accessing the Google Cloud Storage, the ADV G Drive component is used, and it is in the form create that we will initialize this component. Notice here that um, I do the initialization uh, by accessing the CS instance, and this instance is declared in the form and is of the type T Cloud Storage. This is the abstract class uh, that uh, is the base class for all cloud storage components. So I have this instance and I assign it to my uh, Google Drive access component. And the first thing that I do is initialize the application key and secret of this um, class. This application key and secret is uh, stored in an, uh, comes from an any file. And I can't share this um, key and secret with you as um, keys and secrets are always uh, considered private and cannot be shared with other people. The next step that I do here is configuring the location where my access token will be persisted. So um, keep in mind that when I um, will access a cloud service with my application key and secret on a successful authentication and authorization, I will obtain an access token. And so I will persist this access token here in an uh, any file for reasons of simplicity. And that means that if I have um, this access token, when I start the application again uh, and I load this access token from this um, any file, uh, I can reuse my cloud service without doing a new authentication and authorization. I assign the on connected events from my cloud storage service. And when this is done, the whole process starts by calling the connect method. So remember that the connect method will first of all check if there is an access token. If so, it will test if the access token is valid. And if it's valid, it will trigger the unconnected event. If there is no access token or it's no longer valid, this connect method will perform a new authentication and authorization for using the cloud storage service. What happens in the um, unconnected event? The implementation is here. We perform the load settings call. Let me first of all show you um, the cloud storage here. Um, in this case, the Google Drive. So what I've done is create a folder app settings on my uh, Google Drive. And as you can see, this uh, folder is currently empty. And so uh, what I will do with from the load settings method is first of all, I will search um, to get um, an, um, to get access or to find the uh, item that represents the app settings folder on my Google Drive. So I perform the cloud storage uh, service dot search list, the method to find, in this case, the folder app settings. And uh, this here is a collection of search results. So if there are results, the next step that I'm doing is searching for a specific file within this uh, folder that I've found. And if I find a file here, uh, what I do is I uh, download this file here to a local file, cloudsettings.ini, and then I will simply load um, the items from this ini file in my list box. 
Let's start this uh, application and have a look at what is happening. So in the form create event, uh, remember that I have um, done uh, finally the call to connect. And so as there is no access token, uh, I need to perform a new authentication and authorization. So this here is the authorization screen from Google Drive. And so here I need to authorize my application to access my Google Drive. And of course I say allow. And uh, when it was allowed, um, I have now um, my application running with access to my Google Drive. What I do now here is um, add some information in this list box. And let's add some cities that will probably say something to you. And I add these three cities. And now I close my application. And we have a look at what is happening when my application closes. And therefore, we are going to have a look at the events on the form close query. And here we call save settings. Let's have a look at the save settings implementation. Here you can see that I'm again searching for the folder app settings on my cloud storage service. When I find this folder, I will save the contents of my list box in an any file and I will upload these um, settings in my any file to the cloud storage service. So if I have a look now at um, Google Drive and I perform a refresh on this folder, you can see that a file was created, the settings.ini file that I've actually just uploaded. If I will now um, restart this application, notice that I have not gone through a new authentication authorization step, but that I have immediately been able to start my application. And as you can see, it has come up with um, the settings that I, I had persisted before in um, the settings.ini file that was on the cloud storage service. So uh, this time it did successfully go through uh, finding uh, the app settings folder and then also finding the settings.ini file, downloading it to cloud settings.ini to have no confusion with uh, the settings.ini file that is created when I close the application. And finally, it loads these uh, items from my list box in, um, from the cloud settings.ini file that I retrieved from the cloud service. So what I will do now is uh, introduce the Microsoft OneDrive. So I have this non-visual component ADV OneDrive. I've also here a view on my uh, OneDrive folder app settings. I've created the same folder on the OneDrive. And as you can see, this folder is still empty. So what I will do now is uh, actually set up my OneDrive component from the form create. And I need to set it up with my application key and secret specific for uh, OneDrive. And this uh, key and secret is also stored inside this uh, small include file. So I just switch these components and that should be sufficient to get uh, the same application working, but instead of using Google Drive, using OneDrive. So let's see this uh, in action. I start, a, start up this application and of course the first thing that will happen is the authentication and authorization for OneDrive as I had not uh, authenticated and authorized before. Here you can see that it requests access to files on my OneDrive account and I uh, agree with this. I say yes and then this uh, closes and starts up with an empty list which is expected 
as my app settings folder is still empty. So let's uh, add some data in this list and let's add some other data to uh, make sure that it's different information on this uh, different cloud storage service. And so we add some uh, car brands in this list for this um, new test with OneDrive like this we will add five brands and when we close this application now it will perform the persistence of these settings onto my uh, Google onto my Microsoft uh, OneDrive in this case and as you can see it already uh, showed uh, this settings.ini file that appeared automatically here in OneDrive you can see when this application now starts it comes up with the information that I had persisted in the Microsoft OneDrive cloud storage service and this rounds up this first demo on using cloud storage services and that brings us to the second part of the webinar covering access to cloud personal information management services here in particular the microsoft calendar and microsoft contacts the google calendar contacts and google tasks for the demo we will be using the google calendar and it's actually almost identical or similar to access the google or the microsoft calendar or Microsoft contacts but we will focus in this demo on Google Calendar and we will be using the non-visual cloud service access component TAVG calendar for a VCL Windows application if you would be using a FireMonkey cross-platform application you would be using the non-visual component TMS FMX G calendar and this uh, non-visual component offers access to the different calendars that you can configure in Google Calendar. And it exposes this uh, via methods where you can add, delete and update calendars or retrieve uh, all calendars that are associated with your accounts. And to manipulate the specific events within a calendar, we have the TG Calendar item class and a collection of such uh, items where you can add, update and delete items on this class. Things will become clear when we have a look at the demo. And so we switch to Delphi where I have prepared another application. And here we have the ADV G calendar component. If we look in the configuration, it's very similar. We also set up here the application key and secret and the location where to persist the tokens, the access token of my G calendar. And so um, when I press the connect uh, button, I perform uh, the connect method of my ADV G calendar component. And everything starts in the unconnected event of my calendar component. And here I will uh, retrieve the, all the calendars from my uh, Google Calendar. And I will add these calendars to a combo box. If we have a look at uh, how this is added to the combo box, you can see that I'm performing an add object with um, first of all the name of the calendar and in a second parameter I add the object for the calendar itself. And when I have then selected an item from this combo box I will use uh, this um, code to retrieve all events that will happen on this specific day um, on the on my Google Calendar. So how am I doing this? I'm uh, retrieving the selected calendar from my combo box and I clear first of all everything in my uh, list box that will hold or display all events um, set up for today. Um, first thing that I do is um, get the unique ID for the specific calendar that I have selected in my 
combo box. So I ac access the object that I had associated with the selected uh, item in my combo box. And the ID is the unique ID of that calendar. And then I retrieve all events within that calendar. So by using the selected calendar ID between um, now, a zero hour, and a zero hour for um, tomorrow. So by doing this, I have effectively um, all calendar items from uh, today. And um, all these calendar items are uh, available or accessible via the uh, advgcalendar.items collection. And so I simply loop through this collection and display the summary of these um, calendar items and also the start and the end time of these um, calendar items, as you can see here. Then I will also have some code to add an event to my calendar programmatically. So here I have my group box where I can add some summary information, a start time and an end time, and some notes or a description for my um, item that I will add to my calendar. If I have a look at that code, what do I do? I create a calendar item in my items collection. I set the properties of this item, being uh, the summary, start time, end time, and the description of my item. Very important here is that I set the calendar ID, the unique ID for the calendar in which I want to store this calendar item. And finally, I add this calendar item to my calendar. Let's have a look at the Google Calendar itself. So here, I have a web view on my Google Calendar. Uh, and as you can see for today, for my personal calendar, this uh, calendar is empty. And so now uh, let's start our application. And let's try to connect to the Google Calendar. And as you can see, the first thing that happens is my authentication and authorization screen. I have to authorize this application to have uh, offline access to my Google Calendar, which I will allow. And by doing this, you can see that the combo box is already filled with the calendars that I have available. So this is this list of calendars that is now here uh, visible in the drop down. If I select my personal calendar and get today, I retrieve no events as there is simply nothing in my calendar for today. I will add here uh, some events. Let's say that in the afternoon I'm doing some Delphi programming. I create this event and if I retrieve now the events from today, you can see that I get my Delphi programming event in this list. I can add some more uh, events like a lunchtime at 12 o'clock. If I create it and update, you can see that I retrieve lunch and my Delphi programming session in the afternoon. Now we will uh, do the reverse and add uh, something from my application itself. And let's uh, add the dinner time, which let's say starts at seven o'clock in the evening. We set it to seven o'clock and let's take an hour for dinner and dinner with wife and kids. And I add this to my Google calendar. If I now do get today, you can see that the dinner event was added. And you can also see that without doing anything, this uh, dinner event also showed up in my Google Calendar. So um, with this uh, small demo, you can see how little, how little code is uh, effectively needed to have programmatic interaction with your Google Calendar and pretty much the same for doing so with your Microsoft Live 
calendar. And this brings us to the last part of this uh, webinar, a part covering using artificial intelligence cloud services, in this case, the Microsoft Cognitive Services that we will use for both image recognition and speech synthesis. For the image recognition part, this is done by sending pictures to the cloud service, and in return, we will get uh, for the part that does image analysis, a textual description of what uh, the cloud service sees uh, what's on the picture and a series of tags for uh, what it finds in the image that was submitted. Or we will also demonstrate the OCR functionality of this Microsoft service. And we will be using the Bing Speech Synthesis API to uh, speak out the textual information that is returned from the image recognition service. Let's switch to uh, Delphi and here we have created a FireMonkey application because we will be deploying this on a mobile device to use the camera on this mobile device to take the pictures that we will have analyzed. Here we can uh, switch between an analysis or an OCR function and everything is started from the capture button, the button uh, from where we launch the camera service uh, from the mobile device. And when the photo was taken with this camera, the do did finish um, method is triggered and um, here this method will um, save the picture that was taken with the camera to a file and then we will submit this file with this non-visual component for the Microsoft uh, Artificial Intelligence Service uh, that will submit it with the process file method and uh, with the parameter to do either an uh, image analysis or an OCR functionality. When this um, result is retrieved, we put this result in um, the memo. And then we will launch the Bing Speech uh, API component, the non-visual component that will actually submit the text to the service and will then play um, the sound file that is uh, returned from um, the service. So here uh, you can see the call to the Bing Speech API component. So we send the text to this um, cloud service and in return we uh, retrieve a memory stream, a memory stream that contains the audio and we play the audio uh, via this play sound call on the Bing Speech API component. We've prepared a video uh, where you can see everything live in action. Uh, so you can see the actual camera um, live taking images, sending these to the services and um, watch uh, the results retrieved from the Microsoft Cognitive Services. So here we have the mobile application deployed on iPad and the first step is going to discover the AI services from Microsoft to detect objects, image analysis and we're going to uh, see if it can recognize an apple. So we start by scanning or taking a picture of the apple picture is taken and we use that picture and now this is submitted to the Microsoft service a red apple and as you can see it has detected this is really a red apple and has used the Bing speech API to um, tell in words what object it has seen the next step we are going to um, test the OCR capabilities of the Microsoft AI service and here we have a book, a well-known book that we are going to capture and see if 
Microsoft can recognize the text on the cover of this book. Rapid development. Steve McConnell. Taming. Wild. Software. Schedules. And as you can see, it has pretty well um, detected and OCR the text on the cover of this book. And with this, we are at the end of this uh, webinar. I just wanted to uh, share with you some interesting uh, pages on our website, the VCL Cloud Pack page from where you can um, download a fully functional trial version of these cloud components. So all services shown here on this list are included and covered by the TMS VCL Cloud Pack. If you're interested in doing the same, but for cross-platform and mobile application, you can find it here on the TMS FMX Cloud Pack page. And there is one more interesting page that I want to share with you. And this is uh, the page uh, cloudkey.asp. And on this page, we have information uh, for each service where you can register for an application key and secret that you will need to access these cloud services. So for each of these services, you can look up uh, what to do uh, to register for an application key and secret. For example, for um, the box um, cloud storage service, you can see here links and a step-by-step -step description uh, how you register for the application key and secret that is shown here. And the same for Dropbox, etc., etc. All the services are covered on this page. And this is um, something helpful to get started with registering and get started with accessing these cloud services through our components. And this brings us to the Q&A session of our part of this uh, webinar. So um, let me know if you have any specific questions um, and I will be glad to help you. Fantastic, thank you Bruno for that very informative webinar. This was really uh, cool. I've been playing with uh, Cloud Pack for a while now and I learned a few things. So <laughs> whether you're new to Cloud Pack or have used a little bit, hopefully there was a few things there you were able to uh, to pick up. If there's any questions anybody has, go ahead and put them in the question panel in the GoToWebinar software, and Bruno and I will get them answered for you. So, Bruno, I can hear you now. There was a question about how to uh, get the keys and secrets, which right there at the end you showed that uh, tmssoftwares.com slash slight slash uh, cloudkey.asp, which I have quickly bookmarked so I can use that as well. That is really useful because that was the one thing that was um, a little more complicated. I mean, that was the thing is I love, I'm a big fan of the uh, REST client components that we've included in Rad Studio, and this just makes it even that much easier because I don't have to mess with the APIs and the documentation. All I have to do is get the keys and the secrets and I'm good to go. So, fantastic. Um, do you have plans to support the if this then that uh, service, Bruno? Uh, I do know that uh, if uh, IFTT service uh, aggregates uh, REST APIs from um, lots and lots and lots of uh, cloud services, but I'm not sure if uh, they themselves have a REST API. API to uh, interact somehow with all the REST APIs that they aggregate. So uh, I would have to uh, check that first, what their API availability is, and uh, if there is some interesting functionality that can be coupled to uh, Delphi. If that's the case, uh, sure, uh, I think that would be cool and interesting to do. Yeah. The other one I thought of that would be, be cool to see supported that's not on there is uh, Slack, the chat system. Yeah, actually, we've done some initial work already on Slack, so um, you can expect that coming in an uh, update of uh, the cloud packs. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, there's a comment here that said that you're uh, in the demo there, you're storing the 
the secret keys in Constance? Is there a way to prevent those from being found if someone was to uh, scan the EXE? Yes, that's a tricky thing. Uh, indeed, uh, if you make it... Um, well, I think, first of all, it depends a little bit on uh, where you will deploy your application. If this is a company internal application, I think um, chances that uh, people will hack your XCE to um, uncover that application key and secret is uh, less critical than if you have a widely spread and widely popular application. And in that case, of course, you should indeed uh, be careful uh, about uh, hiding that application key and secret. Um, encryption is uh, the most obvious answer to that. Um, you can store the uh, application key and secret in an encrypted way in your application and decrypt it at runtime. Yeah, there are other libraries I've seen that specifically focus around uh, securing your application and data, so it probably be want to use those in combination with that. Uh, in the same vein of communicate er, encryption and security, do you uh, encrypt the data that's being communicated? Is there a way to do that, or is it handled automatically, or how does that work? I think that in that case you refer to uh, files um, that are uploaded or downloaded from a cloud storage service. In that case, these files uh, itself are not encrypted by default. Uh, what does happen though is that uh, the all communication is HTTPS based, so all communication is in an encrypted way. If uh, the encryption of the file itself is critical for you, uh, then again, you can also uh, use um, encryption methods to first encrypt your file before uh, uploading it to the service and uh, vice versa. Okay, so the communication is, is SSL, but then you could actually correct the file itself. Okay, interesting. Yes, that's correct. So it was, I hadn't thought about this, but you mentioned it that the, for example, the first demo you did could switch between Microsoft's Drive and Google's Drive, and the code would essentially stay the same. Uh, that's a really interesting idea to be able to, to uh, have the application or most application be agnostic as to which backend it's using for storage. And then the same thing is also available with the calendar. So you could actually synchronize if you wanted to make something to synchronize between Windows calendars and Google calendars pretty easily, it looks like. Yes, uh, that's that's indeed the idea that um, where possible, and uh, the cloud um, file storage is a perfect example of that, and also the PIM uh, functionality, so where possible, this is abstracted. So um, if you do the effort to uh, write against one service, uh, that it takes no effort anymore to uh, write against another service. Fantastic. How long does the token stay valid? I, I, I like the fact that you showed how to cache the token there. That's a really great feature. But how long does that token stay valid? That's really service dependent. Um, actually, there is a, one little more detail about uh, token validity period. Um, so let, first of all, there are services with an unlimited uh, access token um, validity. Um, there are other services with a limited time for token uh, validity. Uh, for example, uh, all Google Cloud uh, services have a token validity of 3,600 seconds. Uh, that is not much, uh, but um, in addition to the access token, these services then provide a refresh token. And with the refresh token, uh, a new valid access token can be automatically generated. So um, that little detail wasn't covered in uh, the session uh, today, but actually what happens in the case of Google is that uh, we persist both the access token and the refresh token. Uh, we test for the validity of the access token. If it is not valid, uh, then we try the refresh token to generate a new access token with the refresh token. If that uh, access token is then valid, uh, you just connect to the service and uh, you are all set and going. So uh, also in that case, uh, you are not uh, going through a new cycle of uh, authentication and authorization. Okay, fantastic. That's great. 
uh, what sort of uh, support do you have for cloud data? Like uh, um, at this at this time, we have um, a couple of uh, cloud data services. Um, we have a Google uh, Data Store. Um, we have Apple's Cloud Kit, and uh, we actually developed our own uh, cloud data service, which is uh, mycloudData.net. Um, and the difference is that um, this is really a targeted at structured uh, cloud data storage, where um, um, the Google and the Apple service are uh, in the school of NoSQL um, data storage, while our service, mycloudData.net, uh, focuses on uh, structured SQL-based storage. Okay. Now, you didn't list uh, Azure, Microsoft's Azure SQL database. Is that something supported or...? Uh, can you repeat the question as I didn't understand it? Is Microsoft's SQL Azure database supported? No. Um, I would have to research if uh, they have a REST API that can be used for that. If that's the case, that's indeed an interesting, um, an interesting thing to uh, research and, uh, if possible, to uh, provide support for that. Now, you, you mentioned the mycloudData.net. Is that supported by this component pack? Yes, that's included. Okay. Um, the session of today did not focus uh, on that, um, but uh, let me have a look um, to find the URL um, where I have um, a video um, showing how to interact with that uh, service. I'll try to find that uh, URL. Now there was a this is, uh, question here this is about the... combining or having uh, both uh, the uh, FireMonkey and VCL packs combined, and I saw you do have a bundle that has all your cloud packs in it, if I remember correctly. Yes, uh, so we actually have this functionality available for uh, VCL for um, FireMonkey targeting. Uh, all operating systems uh, supported by FireMonkey. We also have it for uh, .NET and we have it for LCL for the case that, uh, for example, uh, you can use this stuff from uh, Raspberry Pi. Very cool. So, so let's see. So yeah, you have a few different bundle options on your site here. I see that you have the all access, you have the, the cloud pack that bundles all the clouds together. So there's a number of bundles available. Um, check out. And then yep, there's the link for the myclouddata.net. Thank you for sharing that in the Q&A there. Um, do you have any special offers going on right now and just in case somebody's ready to run out there and buy one of these packages? Uh, everyone, everyone getting in touch with us uh, via email and mentioning uh, this webinar will get a 20% discount. Oh, fantastic. What's, the, what's your email address for everybody? So you can send it to uh, simply to info at uh, tmssoftware.com. Wow. All right. The, I got to say, I, I, like I said before, and I'm a big fan of the our REST components, but the problem I've always had is, and I've implemented Dropbox and Google Drives, and, and it's pretty easy to do, but you still have to go and look at the API documentation you know, okay, for this one I have to OAuth this way, this one I have to OAuth this way, and there's a little bit of setup that you have to do, but these components just make these st these standard REST APIs just so easy to work with. It's such, so nice just to be able to uh, to do that. Yeah, Cloud Studio, that's the bundle. So, uh, yeah, if you're wanting to work with these APIs, which chances are you are, and I didn't know about the uh, AI one you did there. <laughs> that is cool that you were able to recognize a red apple. Is that is it pretty effective, or is it what, what's your experience been with that? Well, it's kind of mixed. Uh, sometimes I'm surprised uh, at what it can really uh, extract from a picture, and sometimes it completely misses the ball. Um, so it's a kind of mixed, but I guess uh, that Microsoft is uh, improving 
this uh, all the time and that their uh, AI is learning all the time. Um, I'm actually uh, extremely um, impressed with their OCR capabilities. Uh, when I was first um, implementing this and working with this, uh, I have been actually testing this uh, while um, I was a passenger in the car, to, to be uh, fully correct. I was a passenger in the car and I uh, used my cell phone to take pictures of um, road indicating um, uh, things and it could actually read uh, the road, um, the cities on the road uh, indicators uh, while I, I was driving, I, while I was in the car actually. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, there's lots so, of possibilities. Uh, I, you, could, you could, I think, with some, uh, uh, let's say, hacking, uh, create some camera that looks uh, in your car and reads, and reads uh, the, the signs on the road for you. Yeah, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm thinking of all these great things I could do with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> The wheels are turning. Um. <laughs> well, Jim, there's one more thing uh, that I wanted to mention. Uh, you, you are fully correct that um, going through the API documentation of all these cloud services and, and they really come up like uh, mushrooms these days uh, can be quite uh, hard work and not all cloud services also have very clear documentation, so in many cases it's a little bit trial and error. Um, so yes, these components take care of that, but more importantly also I think uh, we, have, we have been uh, busy with these cloud components now for I think about two, three years, something like that, and um, we have seen uh, also quite, um, quite a lot of changes in APIs along the way. So uh, services, they uh, update and change their APIs all the time. And so it's not only a matter of, um, yeah, let's say, deciphering all the documentation the first time you implement it, but it's also a matter of following up uh, these APIs. And uh, when it's needed, uh, you will need to adapt uh, your code to uh, changing APIs. So um, that's also something that we want to take care of. Fantastic. Yeah, I've actually done that where I've created demos before, like around one API, and then uh, a while later I go to pull the demo out, and it's like, oh, this doesn't work anymore because they changed their API. <laughs> so that's good that you're updating that and including that in there. So yeah. fantastic. Uh, what kind of data can you store in the MyCloud data service? So think of a table in the cloud. Uh, if you have a database table that can store uh, strings, uh, floats, and teachers, uh, booleans, and also uh, blobs, uh, then uh, you can have these tables uh, in the cloud and access it from your mobile devices, from uh, web applications, from uh, desktop applications. Okay. And there's a question here about open weather. Is that something you're planning on supporting to have an API? I know you support weather underground now. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I have not checked that uh, API myself yet, uh, so I'm writing it down as I speak, uh, so uh, that I can actually uh, have a look. It from the description, it it looks interesting. So it's uh, it's indeed the candidate. Um, to also support. Actually, I have to say that uh, um, there are so many uh, cloud services um, and um, I think that we could add support uh, like non-stop for all these services and I, I also think that's uh, also where the, uh, the VCA, or where the, the Embarcadero REST client comes in because there are hundreds and thousands of APIs and we cannot simply cover all. Uh, so we try to focus on popular ones. Um, and so if you have suggestions for uh, cloud services you think uh, are interesting for you and interesting for other people, uh, just uh, send us an email and uh, it will be our pleasure to have a look at them and uh, when it's feasible and when there is uh, interest 
uh, we can add support for them in our cloud packs. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That r really, the this cloud pack is great for the the popular, more complicated ones, like the Google ones. There's so much in the Google one, and to have that all wrapped up for you is nice. But then the simpler ones, like um, there's a number of simple APIs out there that are just like three seconds to get connected to with the rest api so it is yes. yeah the the simpler ones it's, it's you can just do it with the client components and not uh, have much trouble so yeah that's correct yes fantastic uh david saying would be interesting to allow clients to write components for new services and perhaps get a big discount on the components is that something you've considered doing Letting people uh, submit yes, their own components. That's, that's actually yeah yeah we didn't have that suggestion uh, yet. Actually, if you um, create some um, cool, uh, you cover some cool service, and well, let's say that we will have a look uh, first if we are really able to uh, manage uh, the continued development uh, of that service uh, of component covering that service as well because. Um, if we add that component, it's a responsibility for us to um, keep making sure that it, say, it stays in sync with the service. Um, so I'm not saying unconditionally that whatever service someone uh, implements, uh, that, we, that we can take the responsibility to include it. But it's a great suggestion if someone else uh, covers some service. Uh, and we like it, and it looks the service looks solid. Uh, of course, why not? Uh, and we we actually give, in that case, uh, a license for free for our uh, components. Very cool. Do you have plans to support like um, go to webinar like we're using right now? They have an API and Eloqua and Salesforce. There are a lot of the uh, services we use uh, behind the scenes here in Embarcadero. Do you have any plans to support stuff like that? Uh, Salesforce is something that we already did an uh, initial look at. Um, go to webinar, not yet. So we are like constantly monitoring uh, services, uh, also getting uh, lots of inputs from uh, customers. Uh, so yeah, let's say we have more interesting services to uh, look at and to work on than we actually have time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. So it's a it's a matter of setting priorities. All right. Well, I'm looking at doing some stuff with uh, GoToWebinar. So maybe I'll uh, if I make some components, I'll give them to you. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Bruno, for this uh, webinar. And I, I'm just going to say thanks again for all the work you do at TMS Software. TMS is one of those one of the component vendors that it's like if I need something. I'm going to go look at TMS because you guys just have such a huge variety of great components and uh, and you do a good job of supporting them on all the different platforms and stuff like that. So thanks for all you do. Thanks, Jim, for uh, inviting me, for organizing this, and uh, thanks a lot for your uh, comments and feedback. Uh, I appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, you actually you got a re award recently from uh, the Blaze Pascal magazine, didn't you? Yes, uh, we were awarded. Uh, that's correct. For um, uh, yeah, maybe I can share that link. Uh, so it's the it's about the FNC components. So uh, we created, we we started uh, research and uh, development uh, over a year ago on uh, creating components and let's say an abstraction layer for creating components that you can uh, simultaneously use uh, for VCL and uh, FMX. So with uh, one component set, uh, which are 100% identical in um, VCL, Windows, uh, and FMX, um, Windows, Mac OS, uh, iOS, and uh, Android. So um, yeah, you can do uh, one effort and uh, use your components wherever you want. That's right, we had a session at Code Rage on these. If I, yes, I, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, that's very, correct. Very cool. Neat idea. I, I remember watching that. I was like, ah, that's really cool. <laughs> yep. So yeah, same code, same components that we work on. 
uh, Fire Monkey, VCL, and LCL. Huh. Yes, uh, you can actually uh, use these components. We, we did some uh, tests and uh, we also have a few uh, demos uh, where we use these components to build applications that uh, run on a Raspberry Pi. Fantastic. And then I see Michael asked, uh, how long will the company exist into the future? You said until you die. <laughs> well, hopefully you stick around for a long time, Bruno, because I sure appreciate all you do. <laughs> okay, this is Jim McKeith. Unfortunately, um, Bruno couldn't be on for this uh, Q&A session, but he was on this morning with me and uh, answered a lot of questions as well and I've been using the components as well so hopefully I can answer your questions if not I will give you information so you can follow up with Bruno um, I will point out that this morning he did announce that you can get a 20% discount on any of his components as an attendee of this webinar so if you do uh, send an email to info at tmssoftware.com so if you send an email to info at TMS software if you have questions I don't answer for you or if there is a, or if you want to get the twenty percent discount, which is a really good deal, then you can do that, and they will uh, help cook you up with that. There, uh, it's a couple questions here, uh, asking if it uses the or if the key secret it gets from you. How do you specify the app user's account to store the data in? So the key and the secret that you get are specific to the developer. And then when the end user uses it, it will prompt them to log in like he showed, and that will then get the uh, session information for that user. So then that at that point, you would be adding it to that user's Google account or Dropbox or whatever. Then if you want to access a central shared one, then what you could do is create a public uh, shared spreadsheet, for example, or something along those lines, and then you could access that central shared one but as that user's, with that user's credentials. Not, if you wanted to do something where you're accessing data like that, but not as an end user, then you would want to use something like the MyCloud data or one of the other uh, central data storage s uh, services that is not uh, tied to a user specifically. Okay. Are the cloud storage components thread safe and the other ones too? That's a good question. That didn't come up this morning. I believe that you uh, would want to make sure you're accessing them from a single thread. So uh, always access them probably from the main thread or a, the same thread and not try and access them from multiple threads just as a general practice. But if you do send an email or check the documentation on that, then you can find out for sure on that. Uh, are, is he using the standard HTTP components or Indies components? I think he's using the standard ones because uh, they're all uh, they use HTTPS behind the scenes, and they don't require deployment of SSL, Open SSL. So I believe he is using the standard H HTTP components on that. Uh, any data synchronization method offered with CloudPack to sync data across platforms? So the if you are uh, with these, you're you're syncing to the cloud, okay? So if you are storing data in the cloud calendar or the cloud uh, Google Drive or whatever, then what you would do is you would not, or you would make the cloud the authority, right? So if you wanted to have a local cached version of a file that is synchronized in the cloud, then every time you connect, you would then go to the cloud and pull that down. If you wanted to have some sort of offline mode where they could work offline and then later push it to the cloud, then you would want to look at, see who has the most recent changes, and then you'd have to make some sort of decision at that point if there was a change made offline and a change made from another uh, another point to the cloud, and so both have been updated since you were last connected, then you'd want to, to make some sort of logic decision on which do that, which may just be a matter of prompting the user and saying, hey, this file was changed in the cloud and changed locally, which do you want to use? So um, I'm not sure if you put the source code up for the specific demos he made for this presentation, but there is a very comprehensive set of demos available with uh, the cloud pack, which you can get from their website, or they're also all available in Git. The sample trials are, so you can go to the Git it Package Manager 
and install the cloud pack from there. And that includes a very comprehensive set of tutorials, uh, one for each component essentially, where you can go and look at how they all work. Uh, so that's a good place to go to for uh, tutorials, for samples. And there's documentation as well. Presumably, it would be fairly straightforward to integrate the TADVG calendar component with the TMS or other visual calendar components in the app. Got any examples of that? Actually, I think there is in the demos. Uh, you can, if you have the planner installed, then it does pull that straight into the planner. And you can just, uh, yeah, exactly what you're asking about there. So uh, is the source included with the license? I think he includes, has both a source and, or with source and without source license. Let me look really quick on the website here. There's a few different ways to get this, by the way. There is the, you can buy just the VCL or just the Fire Monkey individually, or there is the TMS All Access, or there's also a um, bundle that includes the TMS Cloud Packs across uh, different platforms. So you can get one pack that includes .NET, VCL, FireMonkey, .NET, LCL, and uh, Interweb. Okay, bundles. Yeah, so Cloud Studio, here I'll put the link in here for this, includes all platforms. So here's Cloud Studio. It includes all platforms. And if we go to buy it, okay, so there is only, it only includes source. Uh, it always includes source for the Cloud Studio. So if you want to get that, you can get it with, with source. Let's see if the VCL uh, pack Yep, exactly. That one's the same. So if you buy the license, you get the source. It's 150 euros um, to buy it. And I'm assuming that you can, yeah, you buy it in euros, but then of course your credit card can handle translating it to different, uh, different, uh, let's see, order now. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it just shows it in euros. I don't, oh wait, here we go. Show price info in US dollars. It's 167 US dollars or 150 euros for the cloud pack. Uh, there, so there's a bundle, like I said, and I think also if you buy uh, the TMS cloud pack, the VCL cloud pack, then there's a discount if you buy one of the other cloud packs. So if you just want to buy the VCL and the FireMonkey ones, you can do that. But do send an email to info at uh, tmssoftware.com and they can tell you the uh, the best they can help you work with the best deal for that because uh, you do get a 20% discount as well. So yes, source is included. And then something that came up this morning as well is they do update these because the, um, the REST APIs change from time to time. So when you buy this, you do get some updates and those updates can include uh, both new REST services as well as um, new... Uh, uh, new updates for the REST services as they change. So, for example, if the um, the REST services, uh, the, something changes, which happens with these REST APIs, they'll change, and so then this will give you an update to the um, update to work with that REST service, which is good because I've found in the past, I've implemented a number of these REST services that are supported with the REST client library that's included with Rad Studio. And frequently I'll make like a demo and then I'll come back later to use the demo and find out it doesn't work because the REST API changed. They, they typically try to make the REST API changes infrequently. And then they'll like say, hey, this REST, this endpoint in is deprecated, but eventually they will uh, turn off deprecated endpoints or make changes. So uh, that does happen. But that luckily, because you do get the uh, updates with when you buy this, let's see if it has a uh, single source code, free updates for full version cycle or a maximum of two years of free updates. So that's that's great. So then there you go. You, that would include um, all the updates for you, it, um, full version cycle. So like from 3.7 to 4.6 is the example it gives here. And then you get the updates, the, anything that changes, new features that are added, or if there are uh, changes to the, to the REST APIs, you get those updates. Uh, you can see on the website a list of all the, um, all the APIs they support, which is quite an extensive list. 
he said there is a couple others, a couple of their couple they're looking at supporting uh, a couple others that are, they may consider if there's enough interest. So if you do have interest, send an e- in a certain API. If it's like, oh, I would buy this if it only supported Slack or whatever, send an email to info at tmssoftware.com with your feedback, and they will certainly consider that. Uh, like I said, there are a few others they're considering adding. I think Slack is one of the ones they're planning on adding in the near future. But uh, um, it, it uh, depends on the uh, implementation. I think they're pretty close. He said close on that one. They do have, uh, he said that if you do have a, uh, API that you've implemented, or you're like, oh, I'd like to implement this myself. If you do that and send them the code, then they can, if they decide that they want to integrate it, then they will in exchange give you a license to the rest of the APIs. So that could be a good deal. Uh, You can take a look at the code for, or send an email to info at TMS software for more information on that. And also the, um, yeah. So yeah, if you're interested in that, send an email to info at TMS software. But I didn't see the Microsoft, that AI one, computer vision. Yep, there it is on the list, Microsoft computer vision. I didn't see that. The Bing speech and computer vision, that is really cool uh, functionality to have available there. And I, when I saw that in the, in the webinar, I'm like, oh. So I started thinking of all sorts of possibilities there of things I could do with that. But um, the My Cloud Data which he didn't go into. He has a YouTube video that shows how to use that. That's kind of their own cloud services that are offered through TMS. Um, when you buy the the cloud pack, you can also get a year subscription to the cloud data, which would give you um, access to data storage. So it's different than a lot of the other ones that are NoSQL based because cloud data is kind of a SQL, like a, imagine a table in the cloud that you can use to... Uh, um, store data on. Okay. Well, that that's it for today. Lots of uh, great information. Hopefully you're as excited about the TMS component pack as I am. Uh, it doesn't cover every REST service. This morning he said that if they kept adding REST services as fast as REST services cropped up, they would never be done, but they are certainly considering certain uh, REST services to be added. Like I said, Slack. But if there are a REST service that you need to have, you can certainly email info at TMS Software or add it yourself or just uh, implement it with the uh, REST client components. There, some, some, some of them are pretty easy, to, pretty straightforward to add. Um, so just do those yourself with the REST client components. But for more complex ones, then this is certainly a great solution for you. I can't tell you how much hours I've spent around Facebook or Dropbox Specifically, those are two I've worked with a lot, and it's like, oh, this changed, or oh, I want to access this, and you can get there with the REST client components, but having this already uh, abstracted out and wrapped up in objects is such a uh, such a great thing to have. So, uh, take a look at that. If there's some of these REST components are ones you want to use, then there you go, ready to go. Um, yes, there's Facebook support. So take a look at. Uh, Let's see, I'll, I put the link in here, the TMS software site, uh, TMS Cloud Studio, or the other one was the, uh, that he showed in the video there, and I'm trying to remember the link for it exactly was. Uh, key, uh, TMS Cloud Studio. Uh, I can't remember what it was. It's the, he had a thing that's like on how to get the keys. Um so I can find that link real quick. But yeah, there's Facebook support, Google support, um, registering applications for using cloud servers. Is that it? Yeah, cloud key. Here we go. So this page here is a really useful link to have. Uh, it lists, I mean, all of them list all the services, but this one gives you links to how to get the keys for all these different ones. So for example, if you wanted to build a Facebook app, it shows, hey, go to developers.facebook.com, select apps, create new app, uh, enter your name for the app, and create app, and then it tells you what to copy and add those to your uh, your uh, to the code. Sorry, my dog is chewing on a bone under my desk and getting quite noisy. Stop that. <laughs> Where to add those in so that you can connect to it. Uh, like I said, there's examples for each API. You can just go there, and it's really quick to get those samples running. It just says, hey, I need a key. Click here, follow those links, grab the keys, the private key, and the secret, and you're ready to go. Okay. 
fantastic. Thank you so much for your time and for your interest. And we'll look forward to seeing you online at future webinars. Take care. Bye-bye.